Oh, really? Yeah. So you guys, you guys remember, and I, I know we've talked about it, um, why Tesla has been so reluctant to sell directly to consumers in some states. It's because they recognize that the automobile dealers protect consumers <laughs> from manufacturers selling directly to uh, the auto buyers. That's a lame and absolute out of your ass explanation was provided um, by the, uh, what was it, the, the um, Automobile Dealer Lobby Association. Oh, yeah, the, the National Dealership called. Association. Yep. Yeah, the National Dealership said, thank you. They made a nice cartoon their, of it too. Their argument as to why they should not allow Tesla to sell directly to consumers is that it's the dealer's job to protect the consumer from the manufacturer. Mm. So now that it has been announced that the Toyota RAV4 Prime is only going to sell 5,000 units in the United States, the dealerships who know they're going to be getting the primes see an opportunity to gouge the consumers. I'm not sure what part of this falls under protecting them, but according to some of the online sources, some of them are as low as $2,000 over MSRP. Some of them as high as $10,300 over MSRP. They're trying to protect oh you from having a surplus of money. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> clearly it. Yes. Of course, this isn't the first time we've seen dealers you know, gouge consumers and mark up popular vehicles, but... This doesn't help anyone other than the dealerships. This is, it's stupid. It's asinine. There's not much more to add to this. Um, I mean, they can try and justify it by saying, well, you're going to get $7,500 back from the government. So it's really not that big of a markup, but that ruins the entire incentive. Basically they're stealing the tax incentive from the consumer to put it in their own pockets. Dealerships right. suck. So, how, uh, how, do you, how do you stop this, Tony? How would you stop this? I would directly sell to the market and eliminate dealerships altogether. But you're not allowed to by law. Yeah. Right. I so would, consumers... Well, I would buy more lobbyists. <laughs> <laughs> so the consumers need to make sure that they're only going to dealerships where they're paying MSRP and not a penny more. Good luck. At most. Right. Mark brought up a, the question that's been just bouncing around in my head, thinking about the Mach-E markups and now the RAV4 Prime markups. We've seen this before with other cars. Uh, dealers, if there's a market, they're going to jack it up because why sell it to somebody who's going to flip it immediately? Drive two miles away and then go, okay, here, you can buy this and let that sucker make the money. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is, but it... it the, the bad, the sad part is the consumer is the one that gets the elbow in the face. I, I would say, I would say the only way to combat that would be that the consumer, as Patrick said, just don't buy it. If, yeah, but, if, if you, if you are, if you are someone that needs to have the newest toy and you're willing to spend 10 grand over MSRP, then you go ahead. You deserve it. Okay. Yeah, but that's Tony yes. said. 2000 yeah. to 10,000. So you got to hope that you find a 2000. Sure. There were, sure. There were no you know selling what? for MSRP. No. <laughs> they can, they can go ahead and do that. But I would say uh, as a, as uh, the rest of us, we should look at that, know the MSRP and say, not paying a cent over it. You know what? You, okay. Mm -hmm. Go find somebody else to buy it. Cause I'm not going to. And yeah. that's the only way to start to put a stop to this. Maybe it won't, but at least uh, the dealers would understand that there is a vocal group that will not buy them. Uh, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Sadly, so, they only need one or two. That's right. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, down, down in, uh, in Charleston right now uh, in, the, in, the, in the club, we've got a couple of folks who are due for their tax bills. And of course, the state has erred in their own favor on the values of these Tesla. And the procedure is you have to go to a dealership and get a uh, purchase figure. You can't get a trade-in figure, which is all the dealerships give you. And uh, what I tried to do was I tried to get a, uh, a dealership that I already had a relationship with to give me a figure. And they, that part was good. But then I took it back to, to Charleston and they're like, yeah, no, it has to be a local dealer. Uh, this was in-state. This was 
completely, they paid their dues. They are licensed to sell anywhere in South Carolina. And uh, the, the, the treasurer, assessor, the assessor, had wanted nothing to do with it. And uh, so, then, you know, she, she, the guy's like, all right, I'm going to go down to CarMax. And she's like, she had read his mind before he said it. She said, yeah, don't go to CarMax because they, they don't give you the right type. And, and then if you get it from the manufacturer, the manufacturer is not authorized to sell cars in the state. So <laughs> the dealerships are protecting the customers there. Yeah. And, and, and let's be clear, the customers, the owners, Tesla owners did the same thing with the Model 3 when it came out. The early people that got them jacked up the price and tried to flip them and make two, five, ten grand really quick. There was lots have of you guys, um, but have you guys heard stories here. about people who stand in line for 24 hours to buy the very first iPhone and then they turn around and they sell it online for a hundred, two hundred dollars more because it's the mm -hmm. very first one? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much Apple gouges the price of their iPhones just to keep people from doing that? Yep. They don't nothing exactly they don't care exactly. they just sell them direct the consumer that's what needs to happen and these dealerships just need to go away i i don't know why and you know we've had conversations with manufacturers and i know russell and i have had you know, very serious and pointed conversations with uh, manufacturers and we've said why do you have these dealerships doing these terrible, awful things? And they say, well, we kind of have to have them. It's kind of the law, blah, blah, blah. Like, how do you punish those dealerships you who can't. are treating your consumers? And like Russell said, they can't. They're like, their hands are tied. I mean, those conversations that Tony alludes to have taken place. And there isn't a manufacturer that I've ever talked to that wouldn't love to off their dealer network and do what Apple did, which is kill their reseller network and sell direct because then they get all that money themselves. That said, there are risks that come with that. And Tesla has been fighting that for years now because nobody buys their cars until a consumer buys their cars. Yep. So I would sell those cars. Those cars are sold before they come off the boat. Yeah. <laughs> but and that's, that's, that's the... it, It's a love-hate relationship. They love yeah. the idea that that money's in the bank before the car gets delivered to the dealership. But... They got to put up with the bullshit that the dealers do. Yeah, yeah. I was glad to see yeah. that Rivian is going the direct sales route because uh, it looked for a while like they were going to go with dealer network. We'll see. It'd be nice if they could make some hybrid system where the dealerships turn into delivery centers and service centers, and you're not you're buying it direct. They're the ones that are delivering it. They get some you know twelve hundred dollars, thousand dollar delivery fee, but that's it. They don't set pricing. They don't. They aren't involved at all. And then but they make most of their money off service anyway. So if they get, you know, a guaranteed delivery amount and uh, that, that would be a whole lot better than what we have now. We'd have to fix the laws first. Cause remember when Tesla came out, they, they, solid, they solidified a lot of the laws to, to say what they wanted it to say rather than what it did say. Mm -hmm.